Share thanks. Wasn't that a great show? Man, holy ghost. Orlando is in the building. What's up, Orlando? My sister is in Tampa. Man, this is actually an extension from last night. Cause I'm telling you, that thing. Man, Jesus is all that. Invite and share. Invite and share. We're gonna we're gonna really get right into this today. Oh, I'm sorry, Rebecca, you're in St. Petersburg. Hey, from Milwaukee. Hello, blessed beauty. Oh, yeah, Rich Fair's off the chain all day. Yes. She didn't get an alert. Man, we went in with the Holy Ghost last night. My gosh. Jesus. All day. Staten Island is in the building. You know, when I think of Staten Island, I think of Wu-Tang. I'm sorry, you know, that's what I, you know, that's what I grew up on. <laughs> well, we about to keep going deep, okay? Amen. <laughs> Petersburg, Virginia, what it do? Okay, I'm ready to get this meditation going. Um... I'm glad you all are saying it's really been a blessing. Oh, oh, STL, huh? St. Louis. I'm glad you all are saying this because I'm telling you, the meditation has really, really been blessing me as well. And I've I've really been getting, um, yeah, we had a praise report last night for those of you all that don't know. Um, a woman of God. Uh, thank you so much. Sure. Well, it's the, you know, the Holy Spirit reveals the word. So, amen. It's, it's him all day. Um, but I appreciate that. I really do. We had a praise report. It was a woman of God who had got on a couple of days ago when we were prophesying, asked us to pray for her runaway son to come back, you know, or the son that had ran away. Let me say that. I don't want to speak that on his life. He's not a runaway son. Her son had ran away and we um, had prayed for him and she got on and talked about how he came back, you know, so I was very excited about that. Um, cool i'm ready to meditate we're gonna man we, we about to stay in that place where we've been at you all of really really going inside of ourselves to the one that is within us inside of us and so what we're going to meditate on today is ephesians chapter 2 uh verse 20 ephesians chapter 2 verses uh 20 actually verses 20 and 21 and i want to read them to you so you um have kind of a good context of it. It says, and are built upon, matter of fact, I'm gonna read um, verses 20, 21, and 22. And what we're meditating on as I'm putting up this scripture is foundation, our foundation. So verse 19, let me start from there. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints, and of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are built together for a habitation of God through the spirit. And I told you where the Lord has really been taking us and I've just been trying to follow this. Um, it's like he's taking us deeper and deeper to really start focusing more so on the Holy Ghost inside of us, causing us to focus on our inner being. And so what spoke to me very loudly today was really meditating on what is our foundation built on. I don't care what city we live in what your background is denominationally if you are in jesus there is one lord one faith and one baptism 
There is one Jesus. We're talking to the exact same Jesus. All right. And so in saying that we are to be not only fitly framed together as one, but we're all supposed to be built upon the same foundation. And this foundation is the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Amen. And so therefore, we want to, when we begin to meditate today, we're going to really check our foundation on the inside in our heart. Is the foundation of how we think, is it built upon the foundation of what the apostles and the prophets taught in the scripture? Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. We're going to go deep because the Lord, we want the Lord to build our house, right? See, when this house is being built by the Lord, then we're always in the right place at the right time. We don't ever have to worry about, are we going to connect with this? Are we going to get that promotion? Are we going to, you know, what's going to happen at my job and all of this other stuff? Or maybe if the worry does come up, we can immediately pull it down because we know that we are being built by the wise master builder himself. Hallelujah. So we want the Lord to build our house. And as we meditated on yesterday and was getting a lot of good revelation from, we are the temple or the house where the spirit of God lives. And he considers our bodies to not just be a dwelling place, but an actual temple. In other words, he considers us to be sacred. Hmm. We are sacred. We are sacred. And so this sacred place uh, of where he dwells in, it's to be established upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. So I want these words right now to really sink into us that we are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. So as we say these words, heaven is saying these words along with us. The Holy Spirit recognizes these words. And so now things that are not built on that foundation, things are beginning to happen in the atmosphere to remove those things. And God bless you too, my sis. And the things that are supposed to be added to our foundation that haven't been added are beginning to be worked out in order to be added. Amen. This is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing. So some of us are really going to get some real good inner healing today. Praise God. Uh, some of us, um, it, you know, it's our minds being renewed. Um, some of us, we may get confirmations, but long story short, you're going to hear the voice of the Lord. Allow yourself to hear the voice of the Lord speak through the words that we are meditating on. All right. So for those of you all that are new, we're coming from Joshua. Well, we're coming from Ephesians 2 verse 20. But we stand firm on Joshua 1 verse 8, which says the book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and thou shalt have good success. But then Proverbs 7 verses 1 through 3, as well as Proverbs 3, 1 through 3, um, talks about his word and his commandments or his commandments being written on the table of our heart so when we're meditating the word of god is literally being written on the table of our heart amen all right so we're going to begin to let these words be written we're we're meditating on ephesians 2 we're going to do 20 and 21 we're going to see how the lord takes us but i really want us to start off on built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone hmm that that right there is, is come on that's the source when you and I first get saved that's what we start off being built on amen all right I feel such an anointing on this track right here we was playing it yesterday I just I'm gonna keep this going right here I don't know who made it either. I think it's Joshua Mills, but I don't know. Hallelujah. So we're going to imagine, mutter, and ponder. Okay? 
ponder these words. Now, let's begin first to let the words have free reign. So we're going to just say them, repeat the words, okay? Built upon the foundation. Matter of fact, we're going to say, I am built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. I am built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Hmm. Come on, let's let's really go there. Remember, you're talking about the apostles from the word, the prophets from the word. Let's not think of anything modern day right now, except us. We're modern day. I am built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. I am built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. I am built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. I am built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Hmm. Now let's begin to say this. My foundation is built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. My foundation is built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. My foundation is built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Now let's go a little step deeper now. Let's begin to release revelation. I want you to go inside yourself because that's what we're doing. Your foundation is the most there there is nothing more central to you than foundation it's what everything is built on in your life so what is your foundation hmm. lord i am established upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets if you don't feel you established speak that to power now because that's the truth I am established upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. When you say that, whatever, whatever is in you that doesn't want to be established, it has to align with the word. I am established upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Hmm. I am formed upon the foundation of of the apostles and prophets. I am constructed upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Release that revelation on that screen for being built or formed. Where I stand is built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. How I think is built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. I am established upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. How I feel is based upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Huh? How I am rooted <laughs> is rooted in the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Yes. How I respond is rooted in the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. Yes. 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 Now let's go to this phrase before we do the next aspect of it. Hey, count on the roof. One Ephesians chapter two, verse 20. Now let's go to the next part, everybody. We're going to say this. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. That is such a rich phrase. You are saying that Jesus is the cornerstone for your life. In other words, the first brick that was laid, the, the first thing to where the whole house is built on, formed around, shaped around, is Jesus Christ. So I want you to imagine you as a building and the first brick, the most central brick, the one that all the foundation of the house is on, huh, is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. And as we saw yesterday, 
Remember, we access him inside. Remember, there's a person living inside of us. Ha. Ah. Yes, come on. Let's speak that. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Hmm. Or let's just say the chief cornerstone of my life is Jesus Christ. Yeah, I like that. The chief cornerstone of my life is Jesus Christ. The chief cornerstone of my life is Jesus Christ. The chief cornerstone of my life is Jesus Christ. The now, I, man, I want to get let's get let's get intimate with this for real. I can't even resist this. Okay. Jesus, you are the chief cornerstone of my life. Hmm. Come on, let's talk to him. Jesus, you are the chief cornerstone of my life. Let's meditate by being intimate with him now. Jesus, you are the chief cornerstone of my life. Jesus, you are the chief cornerstone of my life. Make it personal. The chief cornerstone of my existence is you, Jesus. Hmm. So I said the you right before G. Come on, let's let's get personal with them. Get personal. The chief cornerstone of my existence is you, Jesus. Jesus, you are the chief cornerstone of my life. Jesus. Hmm. You are the chief cornerstone of my life. Jesus, you are the central cornerstone of my life. Jesus, you are the center of my life. Yeah. Jesus, you are the head of the corner of the building of my life. Jesus, you are the chief cornerstone of my life. Yes. Jesus, you are the chief cornerstone of my entire life. Mm. Jesus, my life is built around you, Jesus. Hmm. All right. I feel us going into some more intimacy. So now as we go there. Let's begin to ask him, Jesus, where in my life have I not made you my foundation? Hmm. Lord, where are you not my foundation? Hmm. Whatever area you are not my foundation, will you go to that area, Lord, and be my foundation? Lord, right now, I give you free reign to be my foundation in areas of my life, in my heart, where you are, where you are not my foundation. Hmm. I yield my entire inner, inner being to you, Lord, and I say, be my foundation. You are my foundation, Jesus. You are my foundation. You are my foundation. Where have I allowed religion to be my foundation instead of you? Hmm. Where have I allowed tradition to be my foundation instead of you? Will you come to those areas, Lord, and be the foundation? Lord, I repent for the areas where I have not let you be my foundation. Huh? Build me, Lord. Yeah, that's good. Come on. I'm just going to ask him, build me, Lord. Huh? You can have confidence that we are praying the will of God. Because he, his, his will is 
he's the chief cornerstone of our life. So if we're this building fitly framed together, then who's building it? Jesus. We're in Ephesians 2, 20 and 21. So then Jesus, build me. Jesus, we give you access right now to build us. Yeah. Come on, let's just ask the Lord right now. Lord, build me. Build me. Hmm. Build me, God. Stone by stone, build me. Construct me, Jesus. Hmm. Construct me around this chief cornerstone that you're talking about. Jesus, construct me around this foundation of the apostles and the prophets that you're talking about. Come on, let's, let's, let's really get real with them. Lord, construct me around this foundation of the apostles and prophets. Hmm. Lord, I pray that you would construct me fully around the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. May I think it, may I breathe it, may I hear it, may I smell it, may I touch it, may I taste it. Lord, may this foundation be, be my entire being. Hmm. That's good. That's a good. That's something good to say. Rebuild my foundation. Wherever my foundation is faulty, rebuild it. Hmm. Jesus, you are the wise master builder. Build me, Lord. Lord, I'm under your construction. I will not worry what man will do unto me because you are the one that is constructing me right now. <laughs> yes, God. Yes. Yes. Hmm. Hallelujah. 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 Build me, Lord. Build me, Lord. Now, let's go down to verse 22. This is really, really interesting. Verse 22 says, In whom ye also are built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. So there it is again, you all. Keep touching on that how God lives in us through the spirit. Huh? Remember that God lives in, oh, I'm sorry, it's Ephesians chapter two. We've been doing verses 20, 21, and 22. And he had us in 20. I kind of want us to go and talk to the Holy Spirit now in 22 because it says we are built together and it tells us the purpose of why we're built together for God to inhabit us, to dwell in us, to live in us through his spirit. Hmm. Can you imagine like really you are? We are righteous. We are equal with God. I, I need to say this. It's been in my spirit the last few days. And I know this is going to challenge and encourage at the same time. Do you know why they said that they that that they had a problem with Jesus in the in the Gospel of John? I'm gonna turn to it and read it to you. This jumped out the page to me the other day. In John 5 18, they said, therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him because he not only had broken the Sabbath. Listen to this. I want you to hear why the Jews wanted to kill Jesus, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. In other words, when you and I say God is our father, we are making ourselves equal with God. I want you to think about that for a second. Have you ever looked at yourself as being equal with God? <laughs> 
You know what I'm saying? This is no pride. This, this is real. This is real. Remember, Jesus has said he humbled himself and became like a man. So this isn't prideful at all. The word says by saying God is our father, we make ourselves equal with God. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. We make ourselves equal with God. It doesn't say we make ourselves, you know, a smaller God. Mm -mm. This is this is the disconnect that we have with sonship. We and we have to break that off because this is how what keeps the door open for shame, for condemnation, for fear to come in. I'm this is the word. John 5:18. It says God was his father making himself equal with God. So in other words, when you say that you are a son or a daughter of God, you're making yourself equal with God. Because you're saying you have the exact same DNA he has. Come on. Come on. That's right. There you go, Dr. Kalisa. We are equal through Jesus. This is why Jesus gave his life. Aren't we joint heirs? Doesn't the word say we are joint heirs according to the promise? Who are we jointly? Who are we joined together with? Jesus. Jesus. So Jesus doesn't sit there and say, um, I'm one of the little lights and you all are the joint little lights with me. Mm -mm. When we say God is our father, we make ourselves equal with God. So I need you to get that revelation. Why? Because this is why God lives inside of you and he considers our bodies to be temples, sacred. He has a higher opinion of us than we have of ourselves. Remember, we are the righteousness of who? Of God. We are the righteousness of God. And I know that's hard to grasp, man. It's, it's hard for me to grasp sometimes. I'm, I'm telling you, like, for real. But this is the truth. So let's allow that to really sit in our hearts. The more it, it, it sits in our hearts, the more we become alive to our reality of who we are, the more we're able to go forth and perform signs, miracles, and wonders, the more we're able to go forth and, and bring revival, releasing evangelism, releasing... I, I'm telling you, like, it's so powerful. But most of all, we're able to be more and more intimate with the Lord. How? Accessing the Father. Mm. So I want us to go to this, this scripture right here. I had to say that for faith's sake. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 3 verse 16. That's right, because he lives in us. This is for real. This isn't some statue living in us. 1 Corinthians 3 16. Oh yeah, this, this is gangster right here. Listen to, <laughs> listen to this verse. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you? In other words, saying, don't you know that you're the temple of God? God sees us as a temple. Let's meditate on that last part. The spirit of God dwelleth in you. We're going to say that first. We're going to say the actual thing verbatim to speak to our soul for our intellect to begin to align with this. Let this word begin to be written on our heart. So let's say that 1 Corinthians 3 verse 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16. The spirit of God dwelleth in you. The spirit of God dwelleth in you. You might have to say your name after this. The spirit of God dwelleth in you, Philip. The Spirit of God dwells in you, Philip. The Spirit of God dwelleth in you, Philip. The Spirit of God dwelleth in you. The Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Dwelleth in you. Dwelleth in you now let's change the you to the me we're going to end it on that the spirit of god dwelleth 
in me. The spirit of God dwelleth in me. The spirit of God dwelleth in me. The spirit, that word is jumping out to me. The spirit of God <laughs> dwelleth in me. You know what just hit me? A lot of times people are looking for God, looking for God. I really want to hear from God or, you know, man, if I could hear God. And God is saying, he lives in me. That means people can find God in me. Or people can find God in you. I can find God in you. Huh. That means we should have an expectancy as believers to find the Lord in one another. Oh, come on. Oh, my gosh. Y'all about to make me go crazy up here in this conference. <laughs> I feel myself opening up right now. The spirit of God dwelleth in me. Hmm. That means the intellect of God lives in me. That means the emotions of God live in me. Mm. Oh my gosh. The feelings of God dwell in me. Ha! Ah. Come on. The vision of God dwells in me. The wisdom, I was just about to say that, praise God. The wisdom of God dwells in me. The creativity of God dwells in me. Woof, come on. The heart of God dwells in me. The counsel of God dwells in me. The recreative power of God dwells in me. In me. The actual breath of God dwells in me. <laughs> the whole essence of God dwells in me. Yo, this is one of those moments, if I wasn't about to get off the scope, I probably would be sitting here looking in space for about the next 10 or 15 minutes. Because this is hitting me a way it's not hit me before. Like, for real, for real. Hmm. So that means if the spirit of God dwells in me and all of creation can't resist that force, hmm, that changes the way that I look at things if somebody comes and reacts to me in a bogus way. It's not that person reacting to me. It's the spirit behind that person. Recognizing the God that is in me. <laughs> Hallelujah. You all, I, I am encountering this and I just want to let you all know, real talk. I, I, this is so real what I'm about to tell you. We are going into an age in time where... It's really the manifestation of the sons of God. And when I mean the son, I'm talking about the sonship. You know, just like how we say bride of Christ, but, you know, men are included. You know what I'm saying? You know, and so what I mean is that creation has been groaning for us as children of God to take our place in the earth realm. Yeah, that's right. Dying to self is that prerequisite. We have to die to ourself. Because the less of us it is, the more of him it is. 
man. Because remember, if the spirit of God is in me, God is not prideful. He hates pride. Hmm. Oh my gosh. It's like I felt, I just felt an extra measure of peace in my life. Kind of like a, for lack of a better term, kind of like a weird, like, not knowing what's coming next, but feeling secure in that. You know what I'm saying? Because God lives in me. You are building me. So I'm trusting your blueprint. Hmm. It's like I know the scriptures about we wrestle not against flesh and blood. You know, and I and I try to practice that. But it's another thing with like, man, like really coming alive more so. Wow, yeah, me too, Corey's real. I'm 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 sitting here tripping. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> I'm sitting here tripping. Like, wow. So God bless everybody. Um, you know, it's the whole purpose of this to encounter him in whatever way it happens for you. Wow. Don't stop your conversations with him throughout the day. All right. Don't stop them. Keep on. Keep engaging. Don't stop this just because you're like, okay, I'm turning off the scope and I go back to my life. Mm -mm. Continue to engage them throughout the day. All right. I'm going to come back on tonight. Um, like I said, we're going really inside. We're really dealing with the one who lives inside of us. <laughs> Man. Praise God. I love you all. You all take care, okay? Love you too. And if you like the song that was playing at the be beginning, um, the meditation song, here's my information. Don't laugh at my bootleg uh, <laughs> thing I put up here. But this is my email, cosblack1 at gmail.com. And then that's my uh, Facebook name, um, Philip M. Watson. Um, you know what? I'm going to try to scope around. Um, let me see. We do prayer six and the seven. I'm going to try to do it around seven or 730 this evening. Um, the only way that. Yeah, yeah. It's, this is meditation. I'm going to try to do it around 7 or 7.30 this evening. If I don't do it, it's because, A, somebody from Crusaders is on. Um, oh, yeah, I've been telling everybody about it. Yeah, about the runaway. So I'll only not do it if, like, Apostle Ed Carter, somebody from Crusaders is on for my church. Or if just something crazy is going on at this conference but if something crazy does just break out at the conference um where to, where i can't step out and do the soap scope well it's always crazy stuff up here um i'll just try to broadcast it or something but i'm gonna say around like 7 30 and if not eight ish i don't know i don't know man i gotta i gotta because i'm at this conference but we're gonna soap scope tonight amen amen so again, if you like that song at the beginning, you heard um, meditation. Here's the email. I'll send you a free copy. K-A-Z-B-L-A-K-1 at gmail.com. And that's my Facebook at Philip M. Watson. Praise God, man. Like, you know, we got it. I mean, that's 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 the Lord. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that, I mean, that's what he say. Like, we got to honor each other. We got to honor each other. You said online web for women on the front. You know what? They are broadcasting that. They they just were mentioning that earlier. I don't know what to um what to go to, but I'm gonna tell you all, especially um the, the ladies. I just heard, man, it was a message. If you all are not familiar with this ministry, the name of these people are called um um. I'm gonna tell you all about them. This it was so good. Um, man, I'm looking. Where did I put this, Lord? Oh, I want to show you all this. It was so good. Oh, no, I know I did not lose that. Well, here it is. 
Here, let me show this to you all and then I'm going to bounce. So it's a um, ministry. They're called the Kilstras. Um, I don't see their name on here. But their last name is K-I-L-S-T-R-A. And they really focus on inner healing, emotional healing. You know, they do deliverance as well. They really focus on emotional healing. As a matter of fact, there are some people that like when pastors and leaders um, are really dealing with things or really need some healing or counseling, you don't know, need to be covered. They actually go to them. They actually have some getaway spot, but they deal with leaders, but also, uh, you know, just anybody. And their the name of their um, ministry is Restoring the Foundations. You should really go look them up. I'm talking about, man, they just dropped some stuff, you all, that was so cold. And what they said was there are four things. There are four factors to us um, and, and what opens doors in our life. And they were showing how God led them to the four things and they have yet to find the fifth one. Now, I want you all to listen to this because what I'm about to tell you, this comes all the way going back even to Adam and Eve. These four things. One of them is idols. Um, idols. And he broke down in uh, Exodus 20, verse five. It says when we hate God, we're being disobedient. Because it says in a word, you know, if you love him, keep his commandments. So when I'm being disobedient, that's an area of me that is releasing a hate to God and opening a door for the enemy to come in. It's an idol. I'm turning my attention on something else instead of him. Second thing is ungodly beliefs, um, ungodly beliefs. And they have a solution for each one, too. So the solution of ungodly beliefs is renewing your mind. Romans 12, too. Right. But they talked about how Satan just constantly tells us lies and how we believe them. And every lie we believe of Satan, that's an ungodly belief. But then the third thing is a wounded heart. And he broke down how even Adam and Eve um, suffered from abandonment. You know what I mean? They were abandoned and and how their hearts were wounded. All right. So you have idols, ungodly beliefs, a wounded heart and demonic oppression. Those are like the four things, um, the four things that that opened the door for the enemy. And they were showing how whenever one of those doors is open, the other three are open as well. So sometimes we might deal with one area, but don't deal with the other three areas. And that's what opens us up to go right back into the thing again. It was so good. So I really encourage you all to really check this ministry out. Um, to, yeah, praise God. Praise God, Free Nicholson. Yeah, check out. It's called uh, Restoring the Foundations. Um, and it's a, a, a pastor's name. Um, no, no, uh, Oppression. Oppression. Okay? Um, and it talked about the four doors. Okay? Four doors. And the thing with the idols, well, I should have I went deeper than the idols. What they based the idols around were the sins of the father and resulting curses. So they were like, for instance, you might not be operating in something, but if 30 people in your family were operating in it, that's opening the door to it. So you need to realize that the door is open and shut the door in your family. You know what I'm saying? Like it was it was heavy. It was so heavy because a lot of times we don't pay attention to what our family is doing. And so then we sit there and we wonder, man, well, why? You know, why is this going on in my life? Why just why am I predis? It's just something wrong with me. I'm just a trip and not even noticing it's a power in 30 or 40 of your family members opening the door to the thing. You know what I'm saying? Like for real, like it's, it's it was so good. It was so good, you know, but it's, it's simple solutions for all of it. Jesus has made a curse on the cross. Galatians 3.13, you know, ungodly beliefs. Renew your mind. Romans 12.2. Wounded heart, Luke 4, 18, Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted. Demonic oppression, 1 John 3 and 8. For this cause, Jesus is manifested to destroy the works of the devil. Amen. All right. I'm, all right, I'm flowing right now. <laughs> I love you all. I will see you later, okay? Okay, bye-bye.